Now in this session, we're exploring the range of thinking skills that you need to incorporate into your teaching of the technologies learning area in digital technologies and designer technology. So in addition to the cross curriculum priorities and the general capabilities, and of course the content descriptors, you should also be incorporating the development in students of a range of thinking skills. Now, three of these are explicitly defined in the curriculum as systems thinking, design thinking, and computational thinking. And I've framed two others based on some of the other elements associated with the learning area. Uh, strategic thinking encompasses aspects of collaboration and of entrepreneurship and the processes involved in managing projects and the design process and the development process of computational solutions and solving problems. And then we have futures thinking, which helps support the development of students' preferred futures. Um, there is an intent in the curriculum that students should be aiming in their solutions to problems towards those that generate the future that they would like to see come about. And there are a range of techniques and processes framed around the concept of futures thinking that can support that approach. So the first of the strategic thinking concepts that we're looking at is um, collaboration. So this is where we teach students how to work in teams. We help them develop leadership skills and also fellowship skills, being able to be a good team member and how working collaboratively and together, they can achieve more than they may be able to do so individually. And there are a range of skills involved in doing that um, and developing that capacity, particularly in the youngest children, can be challenging. Of course, they will often have a much more um, individualistic centered perspective on the world as part of their developmental process. So there are a range of different um, techniques and approaches that you can explore. Um, there's a few mentioned in the course material, but over time you'll engage with a range of those with your students. Then we have project management. So this is getting a little bit more managerial orientated. So a lot of this strategic thinking skill concept leads into skills that business managers would use or those that are working in government or large organizations having to manage large projects and things of that nature. But these skills can also be applied down to the earliest years of primary where they have to work towards achieving a task where they may have 10 minutes in order to do that task and keeping track of time and watching the time and making sure they don't go over time is a skill that needs to be developed. Likewise, they may have a certain amount of materials that they're allowed to use. They can use 20 paddle pop sticks to build this bridge. So managing that, thinking through what resources they have and planning out to use those resources to the maximum benefit, but also so that they don't run out of materials and can't complete the task because they haven't considered those managerial project management aspects. And then as the students develop more around projects, they may have a project that goes over several weeks and they have to plan out who's going, if it's a group project, who's going to be responsible for doing different things when they have to be accomplished so that other team members can do other things that build upon that and a whole range of different processes that go into the framing of what we call project management. That particularly for the younger years, it's time management is a central element there. And also looking after resources. One of those resources, though, is not just the material resources they may have, but also what's called human capital. Many of our projects, students will choose their friends to be with them in order to complete the project. But if they have good developed um, project management thinking skills, they will consider the needs of the project. If, say, we're designing and developing a computer game, someone that's really good at doing 
um, graphics and images that are going to the computer game would be really great to have on the team. Someone that's really good at doing music and making the musical soundtrack to go off the game would be really good. Someone that's good at programming would be really good. Maybe someone that's really good at organizing and keeping everyone on task and keeping track of everything would be really good to have on the team. So if you have everyone on the team with one of those skill sets and none of the others, then the team is going to be less likely to be successful. So having students think about completing projects with the best possible mix of skills can be a challenging task for them. Of course, they will naturally want to work with their friends and so forth. And you may need to go through an educative process to guide them and indeed initially to prompt them and put them into various groups so that they learn the benefits of that uh, having different members with different skill sets contributing to a team project. Now, the next concept I want you to look at is the idea of growth mindsets and of moonshots. This is the moonshot thinking is really trying to explore what ifs. What if we could do something that was really, really remarkable? Um, let's say, what if we could have cars that didn't use fuel and used electricity? and could drive for over a thousand kilometers. Those sort of conjectures were fantasyful 20, 30 years ago. Now we're seeing them come into fruition. Other what if projects are looking at the idea of having robot helpers that can do all of our physical manual labor, or indeed of living forever. There's a range of projects that are, are working on that concept. So there are many different um, ideas that students can explore by looking at moonshot thinking where it's trying to make a really, really significant change where initially you wouldn't have thought it would be possible. But by exploring what might be possible, sometimes those things can be brought into fruition. Now, coupled with that is the idea of growth mindset, which is really about looking at their own constraints around what they can do, what, what students feel they can do. And a growth mindset tries to remove those barriers and those limitations that children and uh, everyone often puts upon themselves in terms of their capabilities. So we should always be looking to try to expand and go beyond our current capabilities. And this fits in with a, a theory by um, Vygotsky, which is called the zone of proximal development. We should always try to situate learning just beyond what we're currently capable of doing. If it's too far beyond, then it becomes too difficult to achieve. But if it's not beyond what we can currently do, then no learning can be achieved. If we're only just re repeating what we can already do, there we lose the opportunity to learn something new and to be able to do something new. So that's part of the concept of growth mindsets. We should always be looking to improve ourselves and to go beyond what we currently can do and try to remove the limitations that we put upon ourselves. <coughs> now, the... Next aspect of strategic thinking is entrepreneurship. Now, this is quite a big thing that's being introduced into education at all levels. And we're trying to change students' mindsets around how they approach problem solving and indeed how they approach everything in their lives. Now, entrepreneurs um, differ in the way that they approach problem solving and the way they approach the world than most people. Entrepreneurs are always looking for opportunities and how to, for want of a better word, exploit those opportunities to do something new and um, be successful in that process. But entrepreneurs don't just have to be in business. They could be in any field of endeavor, um, in education, in the creative industries, um, creating artwork and so forth as an artist. They could be in the social area, looking at how to improve society so the entrepreneurial mindset isn't just about making money. It's about trying to look for solutions to problems um, and looking for those solutions within our current capacities or in capacities that we can um, leverage. Much of education is looking at what we um, currently have as a deficit and learning something new and learning that, and then that allows us to do something. Entrepreneurs don't look at things in a deficit way. They look at it in terms of 
what assets we have. If I know how to do some programming and I also know how to do a little bit of music, then they're two assets that I can use in an entrepreneurial way to achieve success. So I might make a computer game that involves music using what I currently have. Um, now, sometimes entrepreneurs will then look at what they don't have and look at how to um, achieve that, often by employing others, getting other people into their team that bring those skill sets so that they can achieve greater success. So this is the entrepreneurial mindset that can be developed as part of strategic thinking. Now, if you want to explore more about these, there's some additional resources I've provided. But for your uh, first activity this week, I'd like you to think about the concepts of um, IPBL and EPBL. Now, I explained these in project management. Um, EPPL is based around the concept of extrinsic motivation, where we're motivated by things outside of our own interests. So, for example, if I tell my students we're going to have an exam, and if you don't pass the exam, no one gets to go on the excursion. That's extrinsic motivation. I'm imposing that motivation upon the students. Intrinsic motivation is where students want to do something for their own interest. Um, so it may be, say we're going to make a computer game, um, learn some programming and make a computer game, and we allow students to make the computer game on any genre or topic that they're interested in. So some students might want to make the game around um, racing cars. Other students might want to make it around solving problems. Or another group of students might make it around role playing and, and solving a murder mystery. So it's based upon their own interests and it engages them in the task by allowing them to have that intrinsic motivation. If you as a teacher set the task, let's say, OK, we're going to make a computer game and everyone, we're going to make it so that we learn about volcanoes and you have to make your way through a maze to get to um, through the, the inside of the volcano to learn about the different parts of the inside of a volcano. And that still may be somewhat engaging. But it's using extrinsic motivation. It's using the motivation imposed upon them by the teacher. So what I would like you to do is to think about um, what you could come up with in terms of intrinsic motivation, in terms of a project that students could do for their learning, and extrinsic motivation for a project that students could do for their learning. So think about those two and submit um, one of each and explain the difference between them.